Hey guys, welcome to Dream Team for Challengers 1 in North America, joined by the one and only Wyatt Rivers, who many have touted as a great talent scout, certainly from stuff on Plat Chat and stuff, right? Uh -huh. People are really impressed with that you could be like, oh, I like to say Proto Guy, for example, and now suddenly he's like the best cypher in the region. So I know you have experience <laughs> with stuff like esports as well, like finding plays and stuff from like previous org ownership. So how do you do that so well what do you look for is it all i test you look at the stats and go oh this was weird this guy played super well like how do you decide who's a good player and who's maybe just padded up by the stats for example yeah uh, that that is a good question and it's it's definitely a combination of both things because uh there are just so many at least right now in regards to north america there's so many matches going on there's so many matches being streamed there are so many new teams coming up all the time there's so many new players there's no way you could literally watch every game and try to find players from every you just can't do it there's too much um so usually what i do because I, I do have an interest in this and yeah like as you're referring to it was something i did before uh for my own org was scouting for players i just look through stats for However, uh, however long of a time, I just go through stats. I look for anything that stands out as an anomaly, and then I save that VLR page. And then at some point later, if the match was streamed, I'll go back and watch and see if there's a, uh, an interesting reason as to why the stats were an anomaly. Um, if that player really does have some level of talent, what's going on there? Um, so that's, that's typically what I would do if I, if I were looking for players specifically. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, at the end of the day, you can't just go off of the stats. You have to, uh, confirm with the eye test later. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that's one of the most fun things about esports is that at any time a new player can come up of any age, any background and be a real talent. Um, and, and especially in a new game as well, it's just happening all the time. Um, that is that is genuinely probably the most exciting thing about new games for me. So how do you want to like approach this then? Because there's a lot of really cool narratives. I think, for example, um, to use one quickly, I don't know if it's your example of who you might want to highlight as a jet player, but you could say Shazam for the fact that he had this whole like anime narrative turning around after the run and then coming in and performing <laughs> as well as he did, right? Like yeah, yeah. Th there's genuine like highlight moments where you kind of go, just based off the mentality to come back and win the whole thing, you could give him the MVP of that role. So I guess before we get into the individuals, I know that you guys, Plat Chat and stuff, love to watch the whole region. Um, how would you build this team up? I imagine you'd have like a Sentinel player, uh, an, an Omen controller player. What would the rest be? Would it be Double Duelist? Would it be a Sova and a Breach, for example? How have you put this team of the week uh, together in your head at least? Uh, for me, when I was approaching it, I approached it with what has sort of been the NA standard, I think, which is just the, the double duelist, the Sova slash Breach, though these days it's basically just Sova, um, and then a Sentinel and a Smoke player. Um, that's how I've structured it for now. I think that's still uh, the, the majority standard, uh, so I think that's an easy way to, to go about it. So we'll start with what we usually do with the Sentinel role. And again, I'll, I, I imagine you're going to say not necessarily the most obvious option, but the right option. And then I can sort of use mine to, if we at least have the same answer, to highlight nominations, maybe somebody that you could argue could be better than your option, for example, to try and decide who was the best Sentinel, Cypher Killjoy, whatever, uh, of this tournament. So who was it for you when it came to the Sentinel role? And is it a proto? Because... He was that for the, the Nerd Street Gamers Winter Championship with Van Silly, and he's on an absolute run of form. So I guess that would be like a shoe in right? Unless somebody else has caught your eye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a proto is definitely up there. But for me, uh, for this tournament, I actually I went with Dapper. Uh, Old Faithful, the best Douglas Sentinel in, in NA, Douglas. Uh, I think that he was a bit above a proto um, in this tournament. I think at the moment, I, f I find that Dapper is a more well-rounded player than a Proto, where Proto, in terms of strictly mechanics, he might be a better aimer and he might be a better fragger than Dapper. In terms of literally just someone is on his monitor, he will click on him. But Dapper's knack for finding frags off of his utility and then also his ability to gain map control 
using his cages effectively. He's he's really intelligent in early round using his cages to uh, to push up, gain map control, or at the very least, even if he plays it passive, pressure his opponents into having to use utility to retake map control. Um, I, I just think he's one of the more dynamic Sentinels in NA, and he has been for a while. And in this tournament specifically, I think he really was a standout in the in the final couple series against LG, against uh, uh, Immortals in the finals. So for me, Dapper gets this one, though it, it is really close. I, uh, if you say a proto, I, I'm not mad at that at all. Yeah. Um, because he has just been, yeah, he, like you said, he has been on a run of form. I mean, I, definitely a proto is going to be one of those people that's mentioned, but I also think the nature's a good shout. Like, it's going to be always yeah. difficult to come into a team, especially something like Immortals, where everything kind of feels like it's not up to scratch. When JMO and uh, Neptune came in, you kind of go like, it's a good squad, but is it as good as it was before when they had Dicey and Asuna, right? There's always that kind of like weight on their shoulders where is this iteration of the team better than the last? I think you have to say a resounding yes for this. And I don't think Neptune played bad for these guys either beforehand, but you have this player coming in and playing a, a difficult role, which is why I kind of agree with what you said about Dapper, where it's very easy to say somebody like A-Pro because he just frags out so much and mechanically he's so sound and LG and Xset love to play this info-stealing play style. I imagine if you're, you're a Sentinel player, if you're a Cypher playing on attack against that, and for the most part, Dapper will play out on his own lurking, right? Just typically like A-Main on, on Split as an example, that's terrifying to play up against. You have to make a lot of plays off your own back. And so the fact that he played almost like a satellite for Sentinels and did so well to hold their own and had impact to win the series, I could definitely agree on that one. But I think Gay Pro is always just going to be a good shout. The fact that you look at players like him, I think Thief was kind of guilty of this too, where you have a great series, a great tournament. You're like, this guy's the MVP, round of applause. And then the next tournament, you don't see as much of him. I think Sean is kind of guilty of this too, previously with Gen G, right? There's just those sure. players that go, oh my God, this guy's amazing. And then he drops off and then there's suddenly this, he's not amazing all of the time. Is that a bit of an issue? But a proto lightning seems to strike twice for this guy. And so you really have to give him credit for still being such a strong aspect of this LG team to now the fact that it's an S tier team. It's in tier one, right? LG. Yeah, yeah, they definitely are. That is a, I like that. That is a good shout though. I like the nature, especially if, theoretically if we're structuring well when when i was thinking about who i would pick for for my team for the five i was conscious of picking an in-game leader as well so if you wanted to go that direction and have nature on sentinel and have him be the in-game leader of this hypothetical team um that uh, that adds up as well because so i think it was impressive for me how tactically sound immortals were given how short of a time that they've actually been together at this point they had a really uh, they, they had a wealth of nice defensive plays they were really intelligent with controlling the map on defense uh, a lot of nice little set executes so i i would be okay with that pick as well um i actually th th the further we go with the sentinel talk there are a lot of great sentinels in na right now because i think that uh, thwaifo on exit deserves a shout out as well yeah, because even, I, even I would, Kusta for Gen G. There's just a lot of them that have come sure. in and hit the ground running. And it's a very difficult role to do that on. I mean, you go across to Europe, yeah. Dimisic didn't have a stellar performance against Team Liquid, right? You failed to see what he could bring to the table because Liquid shut him down. Everybody came in and had a really good performance this time. At least, I mean, to be honest, we're looking at like the top eight teams, the ones that made it to the closed qualifiers when it comes to these players, right? Because I've just kind of like shut out all of the other teams that didn't make it, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, same. yeah I, I've done the same. What about like so, control players? Oh, were you going to say something else about the Sentinel role before we move on? No, no, I don't. No, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I guess my last thing. I just wanted to give Thwaifu a shout out as well. So I, I was really impressed with this play. Um, but yeah, with controller, I uh, went with my classic pick. I mean, I, 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 I feel like I have shouted out this man a million times because I think he is just still. So damn underrated, but I'm picking GMD for smokes from Gen oh, G. Interesting. Uh, I think GMD has just been. I've had him in like my top ten NA players since the dawn of the game. He actually still is for me. I think that he's just 
for whatever reason, flown really under the radar and still continued to be the highlight of Gen G up until this point. Uh, even still in this tournament, having some excellent games despite Gen G falling short um, and falling short against what were really top teams. They they lost to Immortals and they lost to Sentinels in the lower bracket. Close game against Sen as well. And GMD put up a great performance there. I think he's a mega versatile player. Also, one of the players who can call. He's been the in-game leader for Gen G. He's played all of... I mean, he's played so many different roles in the game. He has a very complete understanding of how to play it. He's excelled on all of them. Um, and he's one of the players that I find to be very... Uh, methodical in his approach. He ne he's one of those players that he'll never really overextend too far. He, he really understands his positioning. I think he's just been so solid for so long. He's the type of player that it, I, I feel like you could slot into almost any team and he would just work. Uh, he's just that versatile. I can see that. See, again, I, I feel like we said this about Nip with the European challenges where you could put any of ninjas in pajamas in any of the the slots and it would make sense you could put the whole team up there and i don't think anybody would bat an eye i think the same could be say said about immortals because i was going to say stanny for sure um i i think that again it's been an adjustment period for him there's been a lot of interviews both written and of course with you guys recently where he's spoken about the the turbulent relationship i suppose with immortals just kind of like the up in the airness feel and he's changed his role around quite a lot too that i feel that now he's on uh something that seems to make a lot of sense i do find that the gen two point super interesting because i do feel from an outsider's perspective that michael mikhail um mk or whichever way you want to pronounce it and also win a super underrated when it comes to how good they are on this team. People are going to look at Sean and go, oh, Genji need more of that, you know, that kind of firepower. But you can't really take anything away from this Genji team. And I don't think they're underperforming necessarily because they've got boomer players, you know, from the very start of the closed beta. I, I yeah. think especially having MCE as a coach for them should make people terrified of Genji going forward. I mean, you got all of the 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 tinfoil hat theories that Brax could be heading there after the COO of Gen G followed him on Twitter and stuff. But this yeah. team that they have at the moment with a bit of time and a deeper playbook could genuinely be terrifying. And I'm really excited to see that team start to mesh a bit more. Yeah, that's, that's something that uh, I, I've talked about so many times as well. Uh, I, th I think on Plat Chat, just I felt that Gen G at no point through their history in Valorant have they really had a bad player. They they have made player changes and maybe both of them, I think at this point, probably small upgrades, but at no point have they had a bad player. Um, I, I've just always looked to other places for the the reasons that they've sort of been slipping down the ranks from when they were really up there in like the top maybe three even. Um but yeah, I, I also, I have to say, yeah, uh, Stani was uh, another great shout. I, I think that for me, when I was thinking about it, it was between GMD and Stani. I actually don't really think there was another smoke player that I would have put in this team. I, I was going so far as to my third option. I was thinking about BCJ, who mostly plays Sova, but he plays Omen on just split. But he's so because talented. Because we did Ghost of Viper, yeah. Right, yeah. But he, but he's so good that I was almost considering putting him. But I thought that that would be a little bit too strange. I, I think that makes too little sense. But I do think that uh, there's a bit of a an open open room for for some more talented controller players to rise up. Not that the current ones are are poor, but I don't think there are that many exceptional players. You don't uh, see like, it really do you like it's the same with the stats right because i said zoms for the winter championship mm. almost as a middle finger to all of the people that thought zoms played terribly but yeah. it's the stuff that you can't quantify in stats how many times is paranoia's connect for example doesn't always constitute a kill or an assist in some cases but it does create a lot of space um and the times where zoms kind of screwed up his placement it was that ooh, was it lg the 1v3 that happened on split I think it was Stella that was still on the Sage that got the Resurrect up on the B site. All from um, Zom's missing his paranoia because Dapper on like 20 health tries to flank in and get the kill. It's it's those minor plays that bite you in the ass as an omen. It's very hard to look good unless you're like Angel and you're just fragging out a lot. But you can look very bad on this. So 
it is kind of difficult. I think everybody was pretty passable. Nobody played badly, but I agree. It was kind of tough, this tournament, to go, wow, this player is a really good Omen player because everybody just had a very set default way of playing that we never saw. A bit of that flashiness, I suppose, which isn't a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely, it's not necessarily a bad thing at all. Um, yeah, I mean, you do, like, Angel's a good example. Like, you do see the uh, entrying omen from from time to time. That is, I mean, uh, NIP were uh, doing that as well when they're running their no duelist comp. You see Korea. Korea's the just, entry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Korea will be entering. Um, so you do see that, and that's kind of when omen, uh, omen, I guess, gets to be a bit flashier. But, yeah, I, I think for me right now, definitely the the top two, from from this past tournament were were Stani and GMD and and I think either either way very viable pick for for the dream team. So what about the silver then? Because again, there's plenty of options you could say. You could bring up BCJ again. You could bring up EU. I think is a great one, even though yeah. he's sort of taking a back seat for now, which is a huge loss for NRG. That's kind of like a GG's almost. Like it just feels like you're not really going to see them get as far yeah. as they did before without him. But who knows at this point. Um, so who is it for you? Because I had Sinatra for mine, because I think oh, it takes okay. a lot of metal to, I think winter championship, he didn't look as good as he did. Uh, he is kind of like the artist level of player where they're just world-class because they're so well-rounded, but I don't think we really saw that in that tournament as much, even though they did get to the final and lost to LG. I think Sinatra was a little bit quiet, not this time, like his utility, the way he plays, he was very mad, you could, the tilted factor, I suppose, from that final, because he just ran through Immortals that game. And I think that to have that turnaround in such a short space of time shows you that he is just a world-class player. Yeah, so yeah, I 100% agree. I, I think he was uh, a little bit off during that NSG tournament. Um, maybe, you know, some of the factor being that uh, that was the first time really playing against such a competitive LG team. Uh, they're, they're not used to their style of play. And then as they adapt to it, he can find his comfort. And I think to some extent also finding some better roles on some of the maps for him as well really enabled him, namely the Reyna on Icebox, the Rays on Bind. I think that enabled him a lot in this tournament. But yeah, his Sova has always just been excellent. He, he's always had some of the best utility usage in NA. If I mean, in the game. He has had some of the best Sova utility usage in the game for the longest time. I mean, if you go back to some of the early Ignition series, he was really the first Sova I think that you saw uh, with so many creative alt lineups. Just at the beginning, he would just pop his alt at the start of the round and he'd be catching two players in the first beam. Um, and he's, yeah, and he still does that to this day. That is, uh, that is a good pick. My, I was definitely thinking about BCJ again. My pick is kind of strange. Um, and to, so some of the preface would be that I was, again, thinking about I need an in-game leader on my team. So for my Sova slash Breach, because I want to see more Breach as well, I'm picking Shazam. And now Shazam is only actually playing Sova right now on Bind. Mm -hmm. um, and he used to play Breach uh, on Ascent until they uh, post-Sage nerf, they've switched around those roles several times, trying to find something comfortable for Sick. He was playing the Breach for a bit. And Shazam is pretty much just playing Jet exclusively right now. Um, his opping has been really good. But I actually always liked his Sova. I always thought he was a really solid Sova. Now, I don't think his Sova is as good as Sinatra's, but I do think he is a top-level Sova uh, regardless. But his Breach was... Absolutely one of the best in NA, um, if not the best Breach in NA when he was playing it. And I think that Breach is just being mega underutilized right now in NA. We, we looked at the stats on this last plat chat, and it's 12% playtime Breach in NA for uh, Challengers 1. And like in EU, it's 43%. Obviously, if you go elsewhere, like, you know, Vision Strikers are famously playing Breach, Sacks on Breach all the time. Mm -hmm. So... I, I think the breach is just so powerful and is really being underutilized. And in my hypothetical dream team, I would like to have Shazam leading the team, playing a lot of breach. And also, I I always thought that uh, I, I or rather I think that the breach could still be a decent position for opping. Like if you look at FPX, if you look at Shadow, um, sort of his like passive opping that he's brought out uh, for for quite a while for that team. 
I would not be mad at seeing Shazam still opping, but doing it on the breach. Um, so that was my pick. Now this uh, this is sort of, I guess I'm I'm a little bit in the land of speculation on this one, where I'm trying to, f- f- I guess, just formulate how this team would operate. <laughs> um, but if you were talking strictly about, I think skill in that tournament. Sinatra is a good pick, and I, I think it's between Sinatra or BCJ. If you're looking at hard, just Sova and skill, I think it's between those two, um, in my mind. For sure. I mean, Crashies has always been good at putting up a performance. Mm. I really like this guy. Yeah. Like, I think that, you know, he's looking at how Soulcast, or even Nico from Wave at this point, who just purely plays Sky everywhere, are going, that's you know, I think that should be like the meta going forwards in North America, especially with the little play rate of Breach, that more teams should be going, let's play the agent that rolls the silver and the Breach into one, especially with how good Sky is against this like info stealing playstyle that Shazam coined, where you can throw out a, a guide in light, have it flash around a corner. If it makes a noise, you know that somebody's there potentially about to lurk or push through, I don't know, onto the B site, for example, on a scent that you're defending. You know not to take a cheeky peek to see if it's clear or not, and you know that there's going to be somebody or five people there waiting to bait you out effectively, right? So I, I do think that with how the meta's going, if you could define it out, I think Sky is a great option for teams to be picking up in the future. I don't think they should one-trick it like Nico from Wave. I think that's a bit over-egregious, but um, I think those kind of players to bring that into play is an important one. And that kind of goes on to Duelists too now, where honestly... Let's be honest, you've got Shot up there, you've got Sean, and you've got Thief. But I actually wanted to put Sick in here, because not only is this duelist on Phoenix probably the best out of those four players, I'll be honest, and that's really tough considering all of these guys are insane, but that flexible hero pool is going to be so useful going forward with the Sky, um, with the Breach that he played sometimes too, the Sage especially. I think this is what Food was trying to do for Envy, but for Envy, it just didn't work out because Food's a great player. He can play all of these agents when needed, but the fact that Sick can play so many agents at such a deep role, it doesn't matter where you put him in at the team. You just want him in your roster, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And I think I I agree again um, in terms of the Phoenix specifically out of all the players you mentioned. Yeah, he, he definitely is the best. I think he's just a more well-rounded player than the other guys that you had mentioned at the moment. Since the beginning of the game, uh, he he's just always had such an excellent sense for timing and clutching. He's just, in those regards, he's able to, to find so much more value on any role that he's playing than a lot of his counterparts on those other roles. Like, Maybe, again, like it might just be in terms of strictly aim, getting kills on people that you see. Maybe Shot Up has better aim. Maybe Thief has better aim. But I think in the long term of a game, Sick will provide more value overall, even just on the Phoenix itself. Um, I mean, he is an excellent aimer, but it's all the other facets of his gameplay that make him such a talented player, one of the best players in NA right now. So, yeah, I think that's that is that is definitely a great pick. Um I yeah, I I almost I might switch mine to sick now that I'm thinking about it because I actually I was thinking uh well so for for my duelists I was thinking about it in terms of I, I wanted to have a jet and I wanted to have a flash duelist yeah same yeah um and I actually did I picked I did pick thief for my flash duelist but you may have just convinced me to change my mind <laughs> because sick is a very uh, sick is a very very good pick. I think and... what makes it sorry to interrupt. I think what makes no, it better as well is like I, I casted the the NRG game that they lost in the winter championships. Mm. Um Sick played Sky on split and it wasn't very good. Like flat out, yeah. it just wasn't as good as some like Crash He's is, for example, on that map. Um and Sick Sky is pretty decent on areas like Icebox. But I love the fact that he has the ability to kind of go, for example, they went to split against Envy. Um, it could have been a Crashies versus Sick game on the Sky, but instead Sick went to play Sage. First time he's done that, that tournament, and it won them that series. Like just flat out, the way that he broke Envy's timings in that tournament, it was yeah. a very close game. But it really came down to Sick's 
fact that he kind of went, fuck it, I'm going Sage. And I think the fact that he kind of did the same thing on something like Icebox with Sinatra doing the same thing, the fact that they can lose and look so bad and then kind of on a turn just go, I'm going to play this agent and then immediately kind of get over the hurdles that they're facing. A lot of teams are going to struggle with that in the future. Just our comp on Icebox is getting broken into. Let's just change it up a little bit. Bring the Rainer in, bring the Sage in, just adjust to see what yeah. Europe's doing, what Korea's doing, and just have that ability. Again, that's what I think is going to make Sentinels possibly the best team in North America for the year. I really like 100 Thieves and TSM, for example, but just the micro changes and the little adjustments that they can make to make their comp just a little more foolproof is one of the reasons why these guys look so strong and the reason why they, you know, Royal Road did their way to win in the finals this time. Yeah, that, those are all excellent points. And I absolutely, in regards to Sentinels and why I think they'll be good for a long time, I absolutely agree. Their players are just so versatile. They can all play so many agents. I mean, I picked Shazam for, for, for Sova and Breach, yeah. and he wasn't even playing Breach. Uh, but I, I just have seen it before, and I have faith in, in him still bringing that uh, skill to those agents. Yeah, that is why Sentinels are so good. Sinatra can play everything. Sick can play everything. Shazam can play everything. I mean, Dapper, he just suddenly goes over to stage for the first time on Icebox. They win. They're just two solid Icebox wins for them. Um yeah, you've convinced me. Sorry, Thief. You're really good, but I got to go with Sick. And the, what, what also convinced me, uh, Sage is just so strong. It took a while for people to realize that the nerfs to Sage, well, they did make her worse. She's still really good, and mm -hmm. she's still very, very viable. And though I did in my mind, uh, to, for writing it down on paper, I, I put the two duelist spot. You absolutely don't need two duelists. You can run one duelist and run a sage on some of the maps. So that opens up this hypothetical dream team to that uh, viable option. And I do think the sage is pretty pretty strong and necessary on some maps. I mean, I think you just need a sage flat out on Icebox or you're at a disadvantage. So yeah. I, yeah, you've you've convinced me. I'm 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 going with sick. Hey. That yeah, that is that is too good of a pick for the, for the flash duelist slash one, sage. One other player I wanted to shout out because you know you look at shot up and you look at thief and there is an element of one trickness about their Rainer play. Um, I think all of them have done well to expand the hero pool, but none more so than Sean. Like the Phoenix is really good. The Rays is really good. Like it's just super cool to see. Um, these kind of maybe one dimensional but amazing players come in and then just start to expand a little bit to the point where Sean, I think people should be looking at Sick now and going, I want to sort of mimic that agent pool. I want to be that role because even if Sick, you know, gets dropped for whatever reasons for Sentinels, he is still an optimal pick no matter where he goes. Whereas if you are, I don't know, say Korea and Omen goes out of meta, I, I do think that he's more flexible than he lets on, but it does, you know, provide a question mark about, all right, how good is this person when his agent is out of fashion? Or maybe in the future, when the agent gets banned out on multiple occasions. Sick is just always going to be a top tier player when that comes in because he's got the best and deepest hero pool in the world. Uh, but it brings us on to like the final jet roll, uh, if you could call it that. I don't know if it would be a jet for you necessarily, but what would that final tip of the spear player be? Yeah, I for me it for me it is a jet roll. I think jet is still just so powerful, so necessary for a team. Not even with opping, just a jet a rifling jet on attack, being able to dash in, take forward positions, uh, entry with the dash. I, I just think it's so good. Um, for me, this was an obvious one. Uh, I am going with pure R from Exit. Ah. I think that pure is so good. He's not the kind of jet that is popping his knives and he's dashing in and he's getting six kills and it's going on Reddit. But he has a knack for finding high impact kills round after round after round. He will just find one crucial kill every round and it's always based on intelligent positioning and utility usage, which is why he's able to do it so consistently. He's not just some crazy raw aimer. His aim is good. His fragging is good but he's so consistent because the other aspects of his game are so good. He does this thing on Jet. It's it's kind of funny to watch because it's like watching Wardell with an op, except he's playing with a rifle. Like he'll push up and take these weird off-angle positions and hold the angle, and he'll always, 
and he, and he knows where the enemy is coming from. He'll hit the, the perfect headshot with his phantom, get the kill, and dash out. Like he's holding op angles with the rifle. And it's just such a unique style. Uh, and I see him do it with such a level of consistency. He finds the pick like 90% of the time. It's I, I think he's uh, genuinely one of the best Jets in NA right now, just in terms of how much impact he actually brings to his team. Uh, I, I don't think... Uh, if hypothetically, if X said uh, were without pure, I think they'd be losing out on so much. Um, he he's really one of the most impressive players coming up in NA for me, and I have a lot of faith in him remaining a, a top player and continuing to even improve from here. Because again, it's just it's based on his actual style of play, his read of the game, and his jet utility usage being some of the best that I've seen in NA. I'll be honest, when it comes to the jet roll, there wasn't anybody that took me by surprise in any meaningful fashion. I think for NSG Winter, you have Shazam being the better all-round jet in that tournament. I think the matchup against Mummy from Envy was the better one because they're both really good jet oppers, but Mummy has a really nice passive playstyle, which I really like. And when people give like Dicey Flack, for example, going that he should be playing like Wardell, should he fuck? He should be playing more like Mummy at that point because I really like <laughs> how Mummy just holds an angle. It's just a role yeah. within a team. It's not like, hey, I'm the flashy big player on this roster because Dicey and 100 Thieves know better to not play on that style and to have such an expensive gun carry them through games. So Mummy, very passive, very patient. Like I can't wait to get to the point where we see more heat maps of players because you get to see mm. the difference between somebody like Mummy and Wardell, for example, with how aggressive they play. That said, there's one player that keeps sort of cropping up, even looking through stats and games. The issue is I was not impressed by the team overall in this tournament, and that team being Anbox and the player being Ye. Um, mm. I think that like his stats are really, yeah. really good. They're the best jet stats uh, across the whole of the tournament out of the eight teams, right? So, you know, that's the thing that sings to me the most. But I do recall games where he has had to just carry. And him and Android have that ability to pop off at any moment. But I feel like this Ambox team, you know, we all remember that uh, Renegades tournament even, that they won, you know, they they got to the finals, they beat teams like um, Cloud9. and so, oh, No, it was Immortals that beat Cloud9. But they made it to the final and they won it. Yeah. And this was before First Strike. But we haven't really seen that since. Like... I, I don't know if you called them a, a, a gatekeeping team. I think so, because I saw people talking about, like, um, what are they talking about Atlanta Rain for? I don't get it. I don't watch the Overwatch League. And I don't know if that was in conjunction to um, to Anbox being the team that beats everybody that's below them but loses to everybody that's above them on a consistent fashion. We're just never going to see them upset, like, a, um, a Sentinels or 100 Thieves, maybe. But... yeah. It's hard to say, really. Like, no Jet player completely surprised me, but I think Ye deserves more credit, even though his team aren't performing to the same level. But I'm curious on what you think about Anbox at the moment. Uh, well, I I think that that is a a, um, a pretty good pick. I I do think that Ye has improved tremendously. Um, maybe not improved tremendously so much as he's just been finding more opportunities to actually. Uh, be a star on that team as the months have gone on. Uh, Cause for a while it did look sort of just like Android. And then Ye was playing, he was playing a lot of breach as well. And I think they've kind of let him off the leash a bit where he's been just having more opportunities to play jet, um, even play Reyna here and there. And on those roles, he uh, has opportunities to look like the star player that he could be. Yeah. I, I feel Anbox right now, they're stuck in this very awkward position where tactically they're very sound. They have very nice executes. They're clearly coming up with executes that are, are unique to their team. They're developing their own strats. They're developing their own sight hits. The issue for them at the moment is one that is very hard to get over, though, and I do think it just comes down to individual skill. I think in their case right now, there is an individual skill threshold that if an enemy team crosses, they just can't win. And by that, I mean teams like Envy. The individual skill overall, it's too high. It crosses that threshold, and Box can't win. They've lost to Sentinels a few times now, and now, honestly, really hasn't looked close. Um, same thing. The skill level is just too high. 
past that threshold, and Box can't win. But their good tactics do allow them to beat teams with a little bit better skill than them, like T1, for example, the team they beat to qualify. I think T1 overall have a bit more skill than them, but it's not enough that they can't still get the win through good tactics. So I think that Anbox are just in an awkward spot right now. I just don't think that the team has enough firepower. Um, and I, frankly, there's no easy way to to really get over that. I mean, I don't know what the team's practice schedule is like. I don't know what the individuals are doing. Does six hours of DM a day solve that problem? Or is that a problem that just can't really be be solved by simply grinding harder at this point? Um, is, is there a need to just swap out maybe one player? Uh, maybe. I think you could argue for that at this point. But at the same time, I could see the reservation in that because though they did come out of the gate swinging by winning that Renegades tournament, they did kind of fall off immediately and they've been sort of just climbing back up the ladder to now where they're reasonably around like that 10th spot or so mm -hmm. in NA. Um, so I could also see... I, I can see value in the claim to keep this team running for... Um, I mean, certainly you, you want to keep them together for the rest of Challenger 1, uh, or rather uh, the, for the first set of Challengers, the first Master. And then maybe from there, see, see where it goes. Um, but I do, I, I feel they're in a tough spot and it's unfortunate because I feel that they're also one of the more interesting teams in NA uh, at the moment. Finally, we do have like a sixth man approach, which could be honestly anybody that you want. If there's any role that you feel mm -hmm. like you haven't touched up on this team. So who's this going to be a uh, final nail in your coffin for this challenges team? Like an MVP shout out. Mm -hmm. So for example, I didn't really think of mine until we sort of got talking, but with everything I said about him previously, I'm going to put Sean. Because I liked, I loved, I loved okay. watching him sort of on the radar. Obviously, you want him in your first five when it comes to a roster, but he's also a player that deserves a shout out. Maybe not for being the biggest fragger, certainly when it comes to stuff that Sick can provide. But I like the fact that he's going in that direction. He's not just sort of holding onto the Rainer pick and making it work. Genji are now starting to get more out of him, and in the future, that is going to be pivotal to how far this team can go. And so, yeah, his reign is always going to be good. He played a lot of Rays this tournament, played a lot of Phoenix, and it's all up there within, like, the top 10 of, like, ACS score, which doesn't tell yeah. you everything, but it tells you enough that Sean, across multiple agents, could have a strong performance, where some of us, you know, when they move over to Rays, when they don't usually play it, they can drop off dramatically, and that's just not the case for Sean at all. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I, I was... I was happy with more happy with Sean in this tournament than I have been in quite a while. Um, I, I was always, uh, and still am to some extent, I still want to see more out of him because I think that he has more talent than he has been showing. But this tournament was a step in the right direction. He was absolutely having more impact across morals than he used to. I mean, before he was really only playing the Rays on split and it, I mean, it just it was not cutting the mustard. It just was not very good. Um, but he has improved on that role and, and he has improved his versatility. So uh, yeah, that is, that is definitely a, a solid pick. I mean, one direction you could definitely go in if you're thinking about a six man, if you, if you want to think about some versatility, I think is we did, uh, we did has played a number of roles at this point. Um, definitely one of the, the better omens, uh, but, and obviously sort of, uh, infamous for his Viper play. Um, I think that he, uh, he he has definitely shown a level of versatility I, on previous teams as well, back to Mamba mode and and throughout. And I think he's kind of just been flying under the radar in terms of his skill, where you know you're not going to necessarily put him as a starter on on a dream team, but he is another one of those guys that you could just kind of slot into a team, and he will just fit what you need. He will bring a consistent level of firepower. And he, he's he's a fairly reliable player. He's never he's never one of those guys that uh, for exit uh, or just generally will will really have a, a poor game. Uh, he he does bring a nice level of consistency across the board. So I would be happy to have Weeded as, as a as a sixth on a team right now. All right, so we can have like an overall team again. This doesn't have to be solid. I think all of the options here are really good. But a proto versus Dapper. I think for this performance, this tournament, the whole series is about that after all. So I think you're right about Dapper. Um, when it comes to the the controller role, you've got JC Stanny versus GMD. I'm sorry, but I think Stanny 
gets this one, right? Because I think it was a really good performance from Immortals that I think they've always been like a question mark team for these kind of tournaments, right? They've always been like, oh, they're looking good. And then they come in and they bomb out in the quarterfinals and you kind of go, well, they're a top tier team, but they're not quite the top five. Same with Envy. It's that kind of uncertainty. And I think the yeah. fact that Stanley's been in part of that team and now is performing well to a point where you have to say Immortals is a top tier team within North America. I could see like him being the main controller on the team, but I don't know if you would argue your case I'm, for GMD I'm fine, with, I'm fine with Stani as well. What about the silver then? Sinatra versus Shazam's an interesting one, considering they're both on the same team. Yeah. I, another one, I, I am fine with both. Um, mine was a little speculative into the breach switching and also Shazam's value as an in-game leader. But in terms of just Sova skill, I would go with Sinatra. Okay. Um, Jet, we have Yeaster versus Pura. I think Pura gets it. Um, overall, yeah. I think Ye is better stats, but it, it almost feels an over-reliance on this guy to play well, whereas Pura doesn't have to play super strong. He doesn't have to be the carrier role. He just knows his role on a team and plays it, and that's why Xset looks such a strong force to be reckoned with. So I'm happy to put him... We both put sick as the duelist, so there's yeah, no contention. Yeah, there. You, you convinced me on that one. That that was yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. Sorry, and then thief, but <laughs> Sean versus Weed. It's a weird one because they're two very different players. Um, yeah, but I think for this tournament, considering they qualified, I think we'll give it to Weeded. You know, Exit. They were the top four. They it wouldn't have happened without him. And again, a controller role where it's very difficult to move over from the Omen to the Viper when necessary. I think his Viper was pretty weak across this tournament, if I remember correctly. It wasn't quite up to the standard that you expect, but then again, you've got the top four teams in North America playing in this tournament, so realistically, you're not going to out absolutely outshine every single game, right? So the team yeah. of this tournament, as we've got it, would be uh, Dapper on the Sentinel roll, good old Douglas Apper getting in on the award. <laughs> <Yep>. It's 50% <laughs> Sentinels, which I think is fair considering they won. Uh, JC Stani as the controller player, Sinatra as the Sova, Pura from Exet on the Jet, and Sick as the Duelist. We actually don't have any Luminosity gaming players in there, which, which I think is, is odd, but kind of makes sense. At understandable, the same yeah. Time, like, yeah. I think really the only one that you could give a consistent shout out to say that should be there is a pro because I don't think Thief yeah, played I agree. as good as we've seen. Which again is the whole talking point of. Have they got the legs to keep this performance up? Are they going to be right. like Scream, where you know that Scream's always going to top numbers even if his team loses, or are they kind of dependent on the team playing well and the enemy team playing worse in some cases? So that's a scary team. I'll link all of White's details in below, but are there any final things that you want to say about North America, Europe, challenges coming up? Uh, any final things to shout out, I guess, if you wanted to? No, nothing. Just thanks for having me on. It was uh, it was fun. This is a this is a good show concept. I like the idea. Um, so yeah, just thanks for having me. And you can catch me on Plat Chat every every week. Plat Chat Valorant comes out on Mondays. And you got the the interview shows on a Wednesday as well. So yep, MVP Stanny. We can give him a shout out to that episode yeah. that's just come out. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you in the future on these kind of things. Why maybe down the line when. Uh, 2022 when Europe gets good formats and stuff maybe but <laughs> that'll do it for this time thanks for watching and take care